to be grateful and to be um, abundant in our perspective. And so um, it's a story about what we do in moments of choice. And the story, I think, is exemplary, not just because it's dramatic, but because I believe that every moment is a moment of choice. You know, we tend to see moments of choice in our lives as these these moments where we, where we stand on, you know, on on the brink of some um, these these black and white sort of decisions. Um, but in in fact, every moment um, in our lives is a moment that we have the capacity to choose what we're going to be. And even though the story itself gains momentum um, and to a sort of dramatic peak after uh, September 11th, the story begins with very subtle choices that we made. And I believe when we, when we look at our lives in terms of these subtle choices, where we listen not so much to um, the booming voice of God, but the sort of subtle whispers of the heart, we're quiet and we decide for ourselves, this is, you know, I'm going to choose to be free in this moment. I'm going to choose to be happy in this moment. And those choices, as we make those positive choices in our lives, um, that meaning gains momentum in our lives. And um, I think the story is there to show that these moments of choice that we have, they really, they build up. And they gain momentum and they gain meaning in our lives. And so the more we engage with our lives, the more that we see every moment as a moment of choice. Whether you're standing in the line at the grocery store and you have the choice to uh, stand and stew in resentment because, um, you know, the person in, in front of you has 13 items at the checkout counter when the, you know, when the sign clearly says 12 items are less or you're going to choose to be compassionate towards that person, or you're going to choose to be patient or relaxed, all of those simple choices, you know, add up to a much deeper, richer life um, uh, for each of us. And so I think the story's there to show that, you know, we, we can treat every moment in our life as a moment of choice. If, you know, if it's just a matter of our perspective. So are you saying that no matter what happens in front of us, it does not have inherent meaning. The meaning is what we take from it. Um, yeah, and I, I think in a sense, it's sort of like the meaning is the meaning is uh, deep within the moment waiting to be born. Mm -hmm. And we sort of have to uh, reach out and say, you know, hello, meaning. <laughs> I see you. You know, I see you there. You know, and, you know, I'm, I'm smiling and I'm waiting for you uh, to be born into this moment. And, um, you know, we're there to, um, I guess, to, to receive the meaning in the moment. Um, but we have to be open and know that it's there and not become cynical about um, uh, that, you know, that life is sort of opaque and just is what it is. Um, I think we have to look look deeper into the moment, look deeply into the moment, and see the meaning that's dwelling there. Great. Okay. And, and James, you mentioned exercises in the book. How are those exercises structured? Well, we have uh, 10 chapters uh, of uh, worth of exercises, and they go through some of the things that Lauren was talking about. Uh, be free, be happy, be, uh, you know, be peaceful, be loving. And... Um, you know, these are things that, that almost all of us really do want to be. Um, but why aren't we? I, I think it's mostly just because we, we're not in practice. And um, I certainly spent many years practicing uh, being miserable, <laughs> you know. And um, that, that sure wasn't very fun. Um, but, you know, it's just a matter of what you choose to, to practice to do. So the exercises... Um, help you see some of the, the choices in everyday life and um, help you practice in your mind. The exercises actually don't require you to do anything. They really just require you to read them. And in the process of reading them, uh, you do the mental exercise 
and the, the spiritual exercise and the, the heart-based exercise that um, uh, helps you practice being who and what you want to be. So that's what the exercises are about. Um, you know, sometimes I, I go back and read them and um, I just feel relaxed <laughs> because, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're just pleasant to read, I think. Yeah, and I, you know, one of the things we say in the book is, um, you know, what do you want to get good at? Because every moment, you're, whether you're conscious of it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, you're practicing it something. So, you know, if you go back to this example of you know, standing in line in the grocery store just stewing in fury over, you know, someone who's gotten in line with the wrong number of groceries and you're feeling, you know, furious and self-righteous and, um, and resentful, well, guess what? You're practicing anger and you're practicing resentment and you're practicing self-righteousness in that moment. And if you do that a lot during the day, well, guess what? You're going to get really, really good at that. Mm -hmm. You're going to get really good at being furious. And then not only are you going to be furious at things that don't call for your fear, you're going to get furious at things that don't even call for your fear. You're going to be resentful about things that don't even call for resentment because you've been practicing it, resentment so much that it just comes up without or even trying. So by doing these exercises that James has written, and they're beautiful exercises, um, we realize that if, what do you want to get good at? Well, actually, I'd like to get good at happy. I'd like to get good at relax. You know, I'd like to get good at being grateful. Well, if I want to get good at those, I've got to practice at them. It's like, you know, um, there was one story we didn't put in the book, but is a, a really good example. My, my father was a, a um, uh, classical music enthusiast, and um, he always loved Beethoven, piano sonatas. So when he retired, he decided he's going to buy a piano. And, um, you know, he brought this piano home, and he was so excited about it, and he polished it, and he, he hired himself a, a music teacher, and she gave him, you know, his music lessons, and it was a song called Fun on the Farm. And it was just this <laughs> like babyish kind of song to him and he just he just didn't understand and he, his fingers were clumsy and he couldn't get the relationship between the notes and the music and his fingers and um, he gave up because somehow he had in his mind that he could sit down at the piano without practicing ever and play this beautiful music but you can't play the beautiful music until you've practiced for years warming your fingers and warming your heart and warming your ear. And happiness and relaxation, um, gratitude, all of these things we talk about in the book take practice. And so if we want to become, you know, maestros, if we want to become masters at these states of being, we have to practice them in small ways every day throughout the day.